Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton. Welcome to this podcast. I haven't done a discussion in a while, and it seems time. Yesterday, on December the 3rd, I posted a story on my Facebook that went around the world. Uh, Not the one I posted, I mean, just the story. Um, That Warner Brothers Pictures announced they would release every single one of their tentpole 2021 movies simultaneously on HBO Max. On the release date. And there'll be a special 31-day window, and then they probably come off uh, HBO Ma- uh, Max, and who knows if they'll come back on there in a reasonable time or whatever. Um, this lit up the world, uh, uh, the entertainment world, as it should. It's a big, big change. It's a big step in a different direction. But there's a lot of people out there consulting crystal balls and saying this is going to be this, and this means that. And uh, politics, entertainment, music, whatever you want to talk about, you don't know what's going to happen. So this is not going to be one of those discussions where I say, I think this is going to happen because I feel it's a waste of air. Uh, I am not a Hollywood expert. I am a movie expert as far as I've been going to movies, buying movies, watching movies voraciously since birth just about. And I have thousands of movies in my collection. I've reviewed hundreds of movies here on the podcast. I absolutely love the medium of movies. So this will be a discussion of how this I see impacting me, good and bad, the movie goer, not the behind the scenes media expert or whatever. So, that being said, the news did, uh, like most people, went, oh, well, there goes Hollywood, there goes cinema. And that's actually what I posted. This doesn't bode well for uh, cinema in the future. But when last year, Netflix, or two years ago, Netflix started getting their movies into theaters so that some of them can be under Oscar contention. Sometimes they only ran a week or two in a theater in New York or whatever the minimum they have to run is to be in contention for an Oscar. But they were preparing for movies like this past year's um, Martin Scorsese flick, uh, that hoping that they could be seen as legitimate. And Amazon has done similar things. They have funded actual movies, put them in theaters so that they would be, you know, eligible during award season. So I saw this coming a long time ago. And as each of these streaming giants now, especially with COVID, we're all watching more TV. We're all streaming more content than ever before. Some of that's good. Some of it's not so good. I mean, I haven't been a big TV watcher in a couple of decades, and I tend to stream the occasional series that catches my eye, and that's about it. As far as TV goes, I watch movies. Um, But everybody else that likes movies without movie theaters to go to, we have had to move on to streaming things if you don't have a large collection like I do or you buy a bunch or whatever. Um, And I get it. And that change, obviously, forced by the pandemic, has been for good and bad. Universal and other studios have released major theatrical movies to streaming because they weren't going to hold them in the can for over a year or longer until theaters opened back up. And that made financial sense for them on a case-by-case basis. And when when Warner Brothers announced that they would release, and this was kind of all of a sudden, uh, Warner the new Wonder Woman movie on Christmas and simultaneously with HBO Max, I'm sure they saw a quick increase in subscriptions to HBO Max, something they were hoping was going to happen when they released the Snyder Cut of Justice League next year that they've spent $70 million on. That's a bigger budget than most movies (laughs) and for reshoots and finishing a movie that they didn't finish. Okay, well, we'll we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that was all the ball rolling to where we're going with yesterday's announcement. Now, obviously, HBO saying this and, and trying to do something new, you immediately got the vice presidents and presidents of uh, major cinema companies coming with a backlash. We need to discuss this. They did this without consulting this. And it seems that the team at Warner Brothers did this without consulting some of their partners in movies they release, like Legend Pictures and things like that. These are major, behind some of the biggest releases, have a lot of money involved. And uh, Warner Brothers just kind of announced this. Now, let's take a look at this a little bit logically and from, again, the standpoint of somebody who is a user, somebody who who likes content. I have not subscribed to HBO Max because they don't really... I'm able to, well, this year has changed anything I would say about how I buy movies or how I rent movies or whatever. I I usually buy a lot of films and I usually do a lot of Redbox, but with the pandemic, I'm not doing much of either. 
Um, I bought a few things that went on sale and had them shipped to me, sure. Um, but I've, I've cut way back on, on you know, my media collection because, well, to be perfectly honest, most of my favorite movies are out on Blu-ray or 4K now. I have them. Uh, you know, the new releases, there haven't been as many and, 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 and it haven't been as many that I needed to add to my collection. I, I have a few friends on Instagram that buy multiple copies of every movie that comes out. Um, I wish I had that kind of disposable income. Uh, I used to buy at least one copy of just about every movie that came out. Um, but man, they're buying like three and four copies because they're steel books or whatever um, of bad movies. And I'm just like, okay, well, um, more power to you. You're a collector and I get it. And I'm a, still a collector to a certain extent, but how I consume movies has changed over the year. And I've been revisiting a lot of older movies in my collection because there haven't been a whole lot of new releases that I've been excited about. And I've streamed a few. Uh, My roommate and I have have picked up a couple. Uh, Some of the streaming services have had some decent things to watch. But my, my level of what I will stream and accept has lowered a little bit because of the situation there's um extraction that chris hemsworth movie i wouldn't have gone to the theater to see that but you know watching on netflix it wasn't a bad flick you know what i mean that kind of thing and being a movie lover all my life who even at high school college age was going to see one to two movies every week i mean i went to the movies a lot a lot of matinees, a lot of a lot of Tuesday special deals, but I loved movies and I loved the experience of buying popcorn and sitting in the theater and it goes dark and you watch some commercials and you eat your popcorn too fast and you get this theatrical experience that you walk out into a bright sunny day, especially here in Florida, and and it's a shocking because you were just in this this incredible world for the last two hours or whatever. And I've always loved that experience and really came to love it again because like most people life gets busy as you get older and I, I, I bought more movies and rented more movies than I went to go see. Big tent pole movies, big big budget uh, you know, Hollywood, you know, summer blockbusters, that I would go see because they're just better in the theater than they are at home. They really are. Uh, there's just something about sitting in a dark room with a couple hundred people going, wow, or laughing or what. It, it's it's like going to a music concert. It's cathartic. It's, it's something we humans, I, I think, seem to require. And I've always loved it. And when I joined AMC's Plus program a couple years ago, and for almost a year, I was able to go to three movies a week, 12 movies a month for $23.99 a month. That is an incredible deal by anybody's standards. Uh, A lot of months I hit 12 movies. So that's $2 a movie in the theater. Plus, you earn points um, every time you spend money on concessions. So like every third visit, I was getting $5 coupons towards concessions. And then you go on Tuesdays and concessions are only $5. And anyway, it became a very cost-effective way to start doing these podcast reviews and going to see movies. And I really fell in love with And I would go in the, you know, 3.30 afternoon. When you're self-employed and you've got an afternoon where you don't have a whole lot of stuff to do, you can go to the movies. And I saw some films that I probably wouldn't have seen otherwise where I would have rented from Redbox or waited till they streamed. And and some of them were really good, like Book Smart. Probably not a movie I would have jumped up because, uh, great, a teen comedy at my age is not first on my list I want to see this weekend. But I had my, my free pass waiting for me and I could go it. And I went to like a four o'clock matinee and there were two other people in the theater and we all laughed through the whole thing. Um, and I love that experience. Is it going away? Is the big question on everybody's lips. And I don't think so. I don't think there's anything to replace it. We have a pretty mondo home theater system here at the house. My roommate is a techie guy, and I've always been into the stuff, and we've combined our systems. And we have a pretty incredible home theater system, but it's still not like going to a theater and watching a movie. As We have an 85-inch screen, and it's 4K HDR, and, and, and we've got like eight speakers and thousands of watts. It's, it's a pretty incredible thing, but it's still not the same as going to even a, a mediocre theater. You just get a different experience sitting in an auditorium watching a movie movie than you do sitting on your couch watching a movie. It's just different. But as the pandemic has forced us, we're doing a little bit more of that than I have ever done in, in a, well, I've watched a lot of home stuff at video, but it, I, not because I had to, not because I didn't have any other choice. So I think, and what I saw on the wall when Amazon and Netflix started getting their movies into theaters, when uh, we all laughed a couple years ago, three, whenever the first ones were, and said, wow, they think they're real movie studios now. Well, now they are real movie studios. The movies they put out are as good as most of the things in the theater and better than some, right? Um, 
And the streaming services have continued to take all of this up a notch by exclusive content, making their own movies or licensing movies that exist. And for Warner Brothers to make this announcement, they are they're they're, they're putting they're, they're putting all their chips on the table and putting them behind their streaming service. Warner Brothers owns HBO Max. <laughs> and the only way HBO Max is, is, granted, they've got, you know, I love Westworld and some of the other shows, uh, his dark materials on HBO, and I like some of their movie content, but I've, I don't think I've ever watched a movie on HBO, but I was going to try and figure out how I was going to watch the Snyder Cut if they weren't going to release it on home video. Um, it's just not, it wasn't, you know, uh, pay for Netflix, pay for Amazon, I don't pay for CBS. Uh, Disney Plus, I did in the beginning to watch The Mandalorian, but then they didn't have anything I wanted to watch. Got back into it for The Mandalorian. I'm going to get back out until the Marvel stuff comes because I I own almost every Disney movie ever made. So what, and and almost every Marvel movie. Well, I do own every Marvel movie. Um, What what can they show me on their channel that that I don't own? And the National Geographic stuff, okay. We watched a couple of mountain climbing movies this week uh, for Free Soloist that I'm going to do a podcast on, which was pretty impressive, but that's a whole other thing. So anyway, how does this change the movie experience? Well, for one, what I saw on the wall when, when this stuff started happening is that, well, I saw this as a good thing, that the people who don't really care will stay home. And I, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but, you know, these days movies cost $10, 12 15 18 at an IMAX, and you're excited about a movie for months or years and it finally comes out and you go and you've picked your seats and you got reserved and whatever and somebody sits right behind you or worse in front of you or next to you pulls out their phone acts like they're at home has conversation you know the whole, it's just incredibly distracting and i'm i don't usually say anything I, I if i can move i can move and i move or whatever but you know it is what it is and that's part of being in the public i get that i'm, I'm not an asshole i'm going to walk up to somebody and go dude you know, um, but on a sold out Friday night, yeah, I've joined the crowd when people have said things like everybody else, but there's only a few of us in the theater. My thought is, why did you sit next to me? I can go somewhere else. Um, and that takes me out of the experience sometimes. And that has become more prevalent in the 21st century. Uh, the last 20 years, it's gotten insane. What I've seen people do in the theater, uh, uh, there's a whole group of people come in and, and they just, you know, they might as well be passing the bong or the beers back and forth. It's just like, it's a party. And I'm like, really? It. But anyway, so I would go to see 12 movies a month on my AMC pass. And that rarely happened once every couple of months, really. It, 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 it really wasn't a high percentage. I don't even know why I'm talking about it, but this is the first thought in my mind when I heard that these movies were going to be on streaming at the same time. Well, people will stay home. The people that don't really care about going to the movies. And let's take COVID out of it. Let's take the pandemic out. Um, We're starting to get some vaccines into the public over the next few months. Things may change. Um, It looks like the United States is finally going to have a plan for 100 days, hopefully. Um, So hopefully in the first six months of 2021, things will start maybe assuming uh, getting back to a little bit normal. But who knows? Anyway, taking the COVID thing out of it with the streaming stuff and people having easier access to stream Mulan. You know, that was huge for Disney to take one of their big budgeted movies and release it streaming. It, you know, that, that's huge. Granted, they charge 30 bucks for it, which is, you know, what you'd pay for the 4K usually. But anyway, you can, you can bait that all day long, whether it was wise for them to do that or not. I think in the long run, it was wise step to go in that direction. A lot of people are going to assume because they have these streaming services, they're going to get these movies for free. And I think HBO kind of said maybe... Um, I think that's great, uh, I guess. People that, that don't mind streaming a, a $200 million film now or be happy with this and will stay home anyway, and that's great. I think, in all honesty, what movie theaters need to do instead of fighting this is start tailoring the experience for the moviegoer who's still going to come regardless, <laughs> you know? There is a company that I, I, I'm not sure, I, don't, I think they, I don't, know if they're still in South Florida, but I pick when they came into Boca Raton, this must've been five or six years ago, we went and checked it out. And it was very interesting to walk into your normal theater auditorium, but there be only like 20, 30 seats in there. And they were pairs of recliners at different angles and spread out from each other. And the movie costs a little bit more to go, but 
there were three rows of seats down at the very front, which you wouldn't want to sit in. And then there were all of these recliners. And that was all that was in there. And they're not, it's not lined up in rows. Like I said, they're spread out and they're kind of catty cornered to each other and they're at different angles. And it kind of, you don't really see other people close to you that way, the way they have things angled. Really like that layout. <clears throat> The main reason we didn't go there more often is, well, A, the ticket was a little pricier than things that were closer to us that were IMAX and better, you know, cinemas. Um, but two, <clears throat> a, a nice recliner almost makes you want to go to sleep in certain films. <laughs> but it was Boca. It was a little pricey. It was a little far of a drive. So, it, it you know, I, I became a member and we went to a few big movies there. And it was it was a fun experience. And I think... Boutique theaters and even the big movie theaters should look into that. Uh, let's engineer it. So have a better experience. If we're going to have 25% of what we used to have on a, on a weekend or whatever, then tailor that experience for the 25% that's still going to come. You know, I will pay decent money or a subscription thing to be able to go to a theater and have that one-on-one -on -one almost singular movie experience. There's a couple other boutique theaters. Um, uh, Silver Spot in Coconut Creek had had less seats in the theater. Their chairs were wider. The, the armrests were a lot wider. When you sat in a chair, there was no chance you were going to bump into the guy next to you. And they were leather. And they had really nice sound systems. And they, they served in the seats. And they have a bar and all that. I think go towards those things. I went to an AMC dine-in theater that was a different experience. The seats were set lower and you had a table and you had a menu and you had silverware and you had a waitress and and it was a different experience to watch a movie and it, you know, and they would come and bring you drinks and bring you food while you're watching. I actually picked that to do the lighthouse, which is an interesting experience. Um, but anyway, those kind of experiences stick out in my mind because I got the movie going experience with something a little extra with, with comfortable seating, with being a singular experience, with a boutique experience, whatever. And I think movie theaters like airlines have become, let's squeeze as many seats into the theater as we can. And finally, in the 21st century, they started rebelling against that. And we got the nicer seats because back in the 80s and 90s, it was like being on an airplane. You were right next to somebody and the, the seat. You had to not put your arm on the seat arm because somebody else was using it or whatever. And we didn't have cup holders. And I hate to sound like first world problems, but, you know, the, as they built those multiplexes, they were squeezing as many plastic seats into those little multiplexes as they could. And so now we have the opportunity. And maybe they charge a little bit more, they do a subscription service or whatever, but what Warner Brothers is saying with this announcement is they're willing to give up some box office profit to make sure their streaming service works. Because a lot of the streaming services are not doing so well. They're not bringing thousands of new subscribers as they hoped, or millions. I guess they need millions. Um, and HBO Max has not had a whole lot of people just run over there. And they've been thinking about traditional ways, exclusive content like Netflix and Amazon have been doing. And let's do the Snyder Cut next year. And they started promoting that now because they've spent a lot of money on it. And so they're not just writing on, we have great TV series and we have a lot of theatrical movies, you know, that we're going to start doing some first run entertainment over here, which is great as far as films go. But what they're saying is they're, they're willing that some of, they know that more people are going to stay home and watch these, especially those big, I mean, The Matrix 4, that's not a movie I would stay home and I, I don't care if I was getting it free. I would go pay to go see it in a theater or the new King Kong versus Godzilla or any one of the big, Dune, I'm not watching that at home the first time. I'm sorry. It's going to be in an IMAX or it's going to be in a really nice theater with a great sound system that trumps what we have here because what we have here is pretty great. But I want the full theatrical experience on some of these big budget tent pole movies I've been looking for to for a while. And I think there's a lot of people out there like me. And I think as the population grows and we see on social media and YouTube and such, and Twitch how things are getting splintered and there's fans of all fandoms, you know, you, you, Doctor Who fans have their world and Harry Potter fans have their world and movie fans kind of encompass all of those myriad worlds. Marvel fans, DC fans, you name it, science fiction fans, drama fans, period pieces. Think of all the movie lovers who don't want to see theaters go away. They will support movie theaters if the movie theaters give us that singular experience make it worthwhile with amc's deal they made it worthwhile for me to go back to the movies again and i did you will see more of these movie studios do this they will have no other choice 
The movie studios will get behind or start their own, if they don't already have them, streaming services or do exclusive deals with other streaming services to compete with what HBO Max is doing. But Warner Brothers has been a strong movie studio for a lot of decades. And for them to put all of their A-list movies in this basket for 2021, it's a big deal. And I hope it changes things for the good. Yes, I know a lot of people will stop going to the movie theaters. Some of the big movie chains will probably go away. It's unfortunate. Um, I'm probably not redoing my AMC deal because, well, honestly, I live quite I move quite far away from the closest AMC. It's not now logistically possible for me to go see three movies a week at an AMC. And and unfortunately, I have to get rid of my deal. Um, I was hoping that they would carry that over because AMC, when all this started, started doing their own streaming service. So they have first run movies, but you have to rent them. And I thought, well, why not do a similar deal? I can watch maybe not three movies a week, but one or two movies a week for that price. It would still be cheaper than buying them individually or renting them individually. And they never really did anything like that. And a subscription service of that nature. But we are entering uncharted territory in the entertainment industry with all of this stuff, with all of the COVID stuff and and the ramifications of what's going to happen going forward. But... It's always been on the wall that eventually movies would be streaming. You know, as streaming gets better, the 4K streams on an Apple TV stream are much better than, say, an Amazon stream. It's not quite disc worthy. A disc will still push more bits bandwidth and just be better. But on the flip side, you know, you, you take what you can get in the streaming world. So... I have hope that this will be good for the industry to kind of make some changes. And if we get more movie streaming that don't waste our time in the theater, that's fine too. Maybe movies stick in the theater a little bit longer if they're better movies and the theatrical experience. You know, Dune, maybe they don't count on it staying three or four weeks. Maybe they count on it staying two months and make the theater smaller, less seats, um, and, and cater to the people who really want to go see a movie but don't want to sit on top of somebody and post-COVID times. These are the, 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 the game-changing things that they could do to stay in business, to keep the movie com- the movie goers happy. Um, and I know it's hard. It's hard for all businesses during this time, but there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's brighter days ahead, we hope. And you, you need to adapt anyway. So why not start thinking about that kind of stuff now? And I know it's a big, big investment for movie movie theaters to you know, radically change their interiors and renovate and remodel and all that kind of stuff. But if they're, if they're talking about bankruptcy and closing in a year, uh, why not, you know, do the last ditch for your, and, and, and do something different, you know, become a different movie experience that compels us to go. I think as long as a movie theater can provide an experience that you cannot get at home, I think they'll be okay. You know, I, I think there'll be less of them. I mean, they were everywhere with giant multiplexes of 25 screens or more. And and that, you know, Hollywood supported that by just churning out movies all the time. Well, a lot of those movies are making it to streaming now. And maybe what I've always considered to be the must-see in the theater type movies, maybe they will be the ones that rule the cinemas. Because that's still the best place to make money as far as Hollywood goes and as far as the cinemas go. Um, so... It'll be interesting to see. And one of the other, I waited 24 hours once the story broke to start talking about it because I didn't want to, you know, (laughs) prophesize what I thought was going to happen. I think there'll be a lot more chiming in from the movie studios, vice presidents and presidents, marketing guys and things like that. But I also think this um, should be taken with a grain of salt as all major announcements like this are. Six months from now, things are getting better and they don't see this as a viable thing going forward. It will go away and disappear like new Coke. (laughs) I mean, it is not unheard of for a big company to take a gamble and do something different. The amount of talk they're getting in the last 24 hours is more than HBO Max got with the whole Snyder Cut campaign. You know, what everybody's HBO Max was on everybody in the entertainment industry's lips for the last 24 hours that you cannot buy that kind of publicity. And again, if six months down the road and they need to change things, they will just change it. I mean, they can because they did this without fear of reprisal. They didn't care if the movie theaters went. So we're not going to run your movies now. Uh, They decided this was their course of action and that's what they were going to do. And they hope the movie theaters came along with it. and The moviegoers, too. Um, Ballsy. Maybe it's good in the long run. 
I think somebody had to do it. I think somebody had to do, somebody at Netflix had to say, "Hey, our movies are good enough to be Oscar contenders. We should put a couple of them in the theater. Spend the money and do it." Amazon thought the same thing. They were game changers, not as big, not as not as far reaching as this could be. So the movie release window has been shortening for decades. When I was in college back in the mid-80s, when I came home from the summer, I worked in a video store that had a couple locations owned by two brothers. They eventually sold to Blockbuster and made millions of dollars, I believe. Um, But it was the first time that I ever thought about collecting films back in the VHS days, that I could buy movies. And at that time, VHSs were $80, $90 because they were all rental copies. It wasn't until things like Batman, the the original Tim Burton movie, and Crocodile Dundee came out that that VHS movies dropped to under $20 and the average person could buy one. And so at that time, it would take movies six months to hit... uh, VHS. And before that, it would take six months or longer for movies to hit regular network television before cable was around. So there was a Hollywood enjoyed for, you know, a hundred, not quite a hundred years, but for a very long time, the exclusivity of having movies where you couldn't see them anywhere else. And I remember growing up and not liking the movies that I saw once they finally came to the television networks. ABC, NBC, and CBS back in the 70s would edit the crap out of these movies. Uh, They weren't widescreen, cut out all the cuss words. They would cut out whole sections that they were too adult theme, that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, why even show it if they're going to cut out, you know, even as a young kid, I knew that why, why, if you're not going to show the whole thing, why would you, why would bother showing it at all? Um, But this was a long, 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 long conversation to have about network sanitizing things for public consumption. That's a whole nother ball game. Um, but anyway, the, the, the theaters always enjoyed this long time. And once VHS came out, and then more with DVD, that window shortened to five months from the time that it debuted in th- theaters to the time it would hit some home video version. And with Blu-rays, it got even shorter. And with 4Ks, we're, we're, we're hanging about where Blu-rays were. Um, it got down to about three months. And we got used to that. Theaters complained, stopped complaining about it because movies stopped doing well longer than four to six weeks. Um, most movies make all of their money, or at least the vast majority of their money, in the first 30 days. Most of the box office deals that Hollywood has with the th- theater companies are for the first three weeks of the release. And then after that, the, the cinema start making more of a profit off the ticket sales. Not That's why concessions are so much at a theater because it changed years ago that the first week, big tent pole blockbuster movies, nearly 100% of the ticket money goes back to the Hollywood studio. And a little bit less the second week, a little bit less the third week, and then it drops off from there. The percentages change depending on the movie, the movie studio, and the deal that it has with the theater. And with COVID, that obviously, that put an emergency break on any of the normal ways things were happening. That's kind of where we were sitting, with a few things coming out even closer. Things um, would hit theaters, and then within a month, they would be on streaming, and then not shortly thereafter, they would be on uh, Blu-ray or 4K. Um, Things got really tight, and a few lower budget things and smaller fringe things came out simultaneously with a theatrical release and they were getting in a theatrical for award season and stuff like that for the most part, but know that most people would stream it or buy it on DVD or Blu-ray or 4k or whatever. And so again, this is an evolution that's been in process for decades that that window was going to shorten up and people, I got to be honest with you, I, I, I hope and I, I think that the people who listen to my podcast are fairly intelligent, but the unwashed masses, as they call them, there's a lot of people on, that never have understood why there has to be that window. Why can't when a new movie comes out, just comes on my HBO box, you know, that kind of thing. That mentality is out there. And the confusion. Remember a few years ago when movies only in theaters. This is only in theaters this weekend. You know, that they added that to the repertoire of movie trailers a few years ago because people are like, well, isn't it already on streaming by now? You know? <laughs> and people got confused because network, the networks, the streaming places like Amazon and Netflix are throwing out all these trailers all the time. And so there is this glut of, of new movies coming out 
oh, was it on this streaming service? Is it in theaters? Whatever. People were confused then. What do you think they are now? Now that most theaters aren't open, a few reopened to smaller schedules. But again, this goes back to, I'm not one of those people. I, I am someone who thinks of the theatrical experience separately than I think of the home experience. And there are a lot of movies in my collection that are just fine at home. But again, movies with real impact, with huge budgets, big screen, wide screen vistas, great cinematography. There's just certain movies that have that take on an even heftier weight when you watch them by watching them, you know, in the theater, in a cinema. And I miss that experience. I'm been glad that there hasn't been too I haven't made the decision. Tenant. Okay. I finally had to make the decision on whether or not I was going to wait uh, for a movie or make it to the cinema. That didn't come out right. Um, Tenant would be the typical movie that I would instantly go to the theater. And because of where I'm living now, we don't have an AMC or an IMAX or anything that's that's a, a you know a high end theater experience. It's not a bad little theater that we have in the Keys, but you know, um, since I don't have that, I made the decision. Well, if it, because of COVID, I'm not going to be able to see Tenant the way I want to see Tenant. I'll wait till the 4K comes out on December the 12th or whenever it's coming out. So that was the first time in my life that I I was able to make the choice, uh, and I had to make the choice. Usually it's been, well, that's one I'll see in the theater, and if I like it, I'll buy the Blu-ray when it comes out, or I'll buy the 4K when it comes out. That was usually, and especially how I used my AMC deal. I I would go see movies that, because it cost me about two bucks, um, that I wouldn't buy, wouldn't stream, wouldn't rent, but, you know, for two bucks, and a a quick drive five miles or whatever it was to the cinema, um two hours of something to do uh there there were a few movies i saw that i had to own like uh book smart or ready or not some of the few movies from last year that you know i reviewed uh, i went to review just because and then walked out of the theater and went, i love this movie i have to own a copy of this movie there's also been some weird stuff for us that own movies that the streaming services have been changing if you haven't noticed voodoo was bought out by another company they used to be walmart streaming service and they've started offering when you buy a movie on Vudu, you get all of the versions of that movie, the standard definition, the high definition, and the 4K. That presents a pretty great deal some of the time. Um, I don't buy a lot of movies that way, but I noticed it when I have pulled up my Vudu to watch some things that I have in storage. Um, so I wanted to watch the, the streaming version. And that... that that's a new printout on there, you know, when it gives you the options and what's available for that movie that you own. Um so that's kind of been changing too that maybe they're getting into the mindset that a movie's a movie and and you don't really need to buy the different versions of the movie maybe if if we're going to talk people into buying more movies let them just buy the movie and get whatever versions work for their systems and future proof their little their little collections as well right because that's why a lot of us are buying 4Ks now we feel this will be the last physical media that we'll get That from 8K on, whatever's next, uh, everything will stream. And you'll be able to download, but you probably won't be able to buy discs after this. Uh, It depends on how things go. COVID, again, throwing a wild card into the planned evolution of home video. I know that a lot of movie studios and a lot of of companies were looking forward to getting rid of home video. It's a lot of rights issues. And I can put some links. Uh, There was a great... uh, uh, discussion from one of the guys I follow on YouTube, Elliot, posted a discussion that you don't really own the movies that you buy. And he gets way deep into the the legal ease of even when you buy a Blu-ray, you technically don't really own it. You own a license to watch it. And if for some reason the movie studio ever wanted to take it back, they could. Um, that also says on all my promotional copies in the radio industry, when I get an album, it says that the record label could come take it back if I don't use it or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, which is an interesting thought. Nobody's actually going to come take your movie collection away from you. But uh, people are finding that streaming services change or licensing deals change and movies they've owned or rented disappear out of their accounts. My Blu-rays don't disappear. So, again, why I'm a big fan of having physical media. Uh, that being said, I still love the theatrical experience. So I think we've honestly been heading this way the whole time. And the HBO announcement was going to happen one day or not. COVID rushed it. 
You know, that they're looking at, okay, well, if we can't, you know, make zillions of dollars in cinemas, let's see if we can super proof our new streaming service and make sure that everybody wants to be a part of it. And that announcement, I mean, if you're somebody who's a fringe movie watcher who wanted to see these movies but don't care if you see them in the theater, you just signed up for HBO Max. I mean, (laughs) if I were one of those people, I would have already done it. Um, But I'm not. And I have a massive movie collection, and I can stream most of what I want uh, if I don't own it. And that, but I'm different. And, and I know most people, the ease of being able to stream something is an amazing thing. And I believe me, there are certain things that I go, yeah, I don't need to see that in the theater. I'll, I'll red box it or I'll stream it. I, I totally get it now. Um, but for a long time, I wasn't. I, w- I was a, the theater was the only way, and, and a hard copy at home was the only way. But this old dog is learning some new tricks, and I do stream these days, and I do enjoy some streams. Uh, especially as I mentioned earlier, the Apple streams are really good. Um, uh, Tim has an Apple uh, account. He likes a lot of the programming there, and he's bought a lot of movies from it because he can watch it on his iPad and on the TV, and his, you know. And now I notice we finally have a, an Apple app on the PlayStation, which is very cool. On my PlayStation uh, 4 Pro, that appeared in the latest update. Um, but I've never really spent a whole lot of time with it. I might use iTunes for my music library, but I haven't bought a lot because, again, I'm a I'm a fan of hard copies and discs. But you know, having that and comparing their stream to other streams, the Apple streams are really really pretty close to the theatrical and pretty close to a hard disk experience, I got to say. So it'll be interesting to see what 2021 does. It'll be interesting to see what other movie studios do. I say this is all going to work out for us movie lovers, I think, in the long run. That we have better access to movies is really what we all want. Right? (laughs) I mean, um, I just hope that the movie studios don't start downgrading the experience or the budgets because they can't make it back like they used to. When Marvel can put out a movie and it makes over a billion dollars on, a, say, a 200 or a $300 million investment, they can almost count on that. They can almost bank on that. And if the, the venue to make that kind of money doesn't exist, that theaters don't get backed into shape and they can't make a billion dollars, then they're going to have to figure out some other things. And people are buying less home video stuff, home movies, uh, you know, Blu-rays and 4Ks. People are streaming more. Part of business, you know, you, you definitely want to be a leader. You definitely want to stand out there. You want you want to you know, you know want, to, want to be cutting edge and and hope everybody follows along and, and you get that big reward. But it's I know it's hard, it, it, and it, things are going to have to change. And HBO is just kind of you know uh, Warner Brothers is just kind of pushing it a little harder than I expected to happen this quick. But it's going to happen. So let me know what you think. Uh, I, I don't get a whole lot of feedback and comments and stuff. I don't know if I just wow you with my vocabulary <laughs> and my, my stellar voice or uh, or what, but you're always welcome to post in the comments or send me messages. My email and my social media accounts are all on there. Uh, love to discuss this with people um, that are movie fans because, like I said, a lot of the guys that I watch on YouTube just instantly started ringing the death knell bell of cinemas. And I just think if cinemas started thinking about this logically and, and redid the cinema experience, experience to make it something that, again, I've always said when this all started, that if I can get something at the theater that I can't get at home, I will still go to the theater. And and to see a movie in IMAX is an amazing thing. And to see a movie, uh, you know, on a sold out weekend with a big crowd just can't be replicated at home. Certain movies are always going to do well that way. Uh, crowd pleasing, big budget movies. And I don't think they, that experience will ever go away. It will just become something else. Maybe the seats rumble more. <laughs> Maybe we get 4D and smell of vision You know, I, I, I don't know what's next, but I'm a big fan of, of the 4K and 8K projectors and the, the Dolby Atmos in the, in the theater and such. So I still love the movie theaters. I, I hope they survive all of this, and I hope what Warner Brothers and HBO Max is doing only makes things better for movie watchers. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. My website is therockfile.com. Thanks for listening to The Long Ramble. I'd love to hear from you.